Back here on Fantasy Baseball Today, presented by Captain Morgan, Jason Horowitz, Eric Mack, Arrestus Estrada. Glad to be with you here uh, on CBSSports.com. And guys, time for the pitching planner. We kind of touched on this a little bit earlier. Uh, and we'll touch on it again here, but we'll, we'll get into some rookies that are going to be coming up very shortly. Let's start with the role this yeah. Chapman here uh, with the Reds. He's having a, a start pushed back uh, right. with Cincinnati because of the blister. Emac, is he going to be in the majors at the end of this week? Well, you would have thought going into the season, June 1, he would have been here by now. There was this, even a possibility up to the final two weeks of spring training that he would have already uh, been in the major leagues along with Mike Leake uh, out of spring training. Chapman, though, he's had some struggles down at AAA, and then he has this blister issue. So he might not be one of those June 1 call-ups. But it tends to be this time of year, you know, the, the teams break up their, uh, their, t their seasons in thirds. The first third of the season, those first two months, they see what they have, and then the second two-thirds, there's the second two months, the second third, they, uh, they try to add things to the roster. Usually it starts with the minor leaguers, then it starts with the, tr then it goes to the trades like the Roy Oswalt's. So right now you're going to see the influx of uh, young prospects to the major leagues. He'll be up though. I'm, I, I guarantee you that it, barring the scenario with the blister or any other yeah. little nagging injury being serious, which a blister actually could be, you know, something that could nag Absolutely. around. And yeah. if it does, then, yeah, then you want to kind of slow him back. But if it's not and that heals up properly, he'll be up. And I'm going to tell you why. Because Cincinnati still is a small market team. They're putting a lot of, you know, excitement right now into the season. Uh, they paid this guy a lot of money. Uh, he's pitched at a pretty high clip in international play. For him, it's just, you know, getting acclimated as a Cuban-born player uh, to minor leagues, the travel, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. He will be up, and I think he's going to be dramatically impactful and yep. successful early on. So when? So it's not I, I think it'll be, it'll be as soon as he's healthy from this. And yeah. after June. After well, June. Let me add, well, how, reason, about, how about this? Will his next start be in AAA with Louisville or will it be with the Cincinnati Reds? It's, 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 it doesn't really matter when the next start is. It, it, what matters is the, is, is the finger. Because okay? right. once you pass June 1, then they've passed the, the, the major landmark of he's not going to have a full season to work with. You right. know what I mean? As mm -hmm. far as arbitration. That's their deal. And it's also the Washington Nationals deal. They're, they're, they're yeah. trying to say, stave off one extra yeah. year. These right. guys will be up in June. Which, of course, brings us to Steven Strasburg making a, uh, another start tonight in AAA for Syracuse. 3-0 yeah. and uh, in his starts there Unhittable for Syracuse. In AAA. Four hits, yeah. 22 strikeouts, four walks. I talked to my buddy up there, uh, Jason Benetti. He's the voice of the Syracuse Chiefs. Uh, he said the best thing about Steven Strasburg, on and off the field, the guy does not get rattled at all. Uh, two errors in the game at Rochester in his last start, and in both times, yeah. he rolled over a double play. I, I just want to play the devil's advocate. It's, you're from it's, Rochester, it's, right? Well, it's, it's, no, no. It's just easy. Which he's famous for. It's yeah. easy Here, to way. be the big man on campus and not get rolled. But when he's throwing that fastball to Albert Pujols, he sends it 450 feet. Let's see how he changes then. Steven Strasburg, yes, he will be in the major leagues. It could even happen at the end of this week because on Tuesday night, he'll make his start. And then the, the Nationals need a number five starter with Scott Olson on the DL. They're going to skip that fifth starter spot until Saturday, that is, or until Sunday. That is a start that could be made by Strasburg on regular rest. The problem is the Nationals and their Mass and Network already scheduled two prime time yep. events with Strasburg pitching one is on tonight, television. One is yeah. tonight, yeah. the other is later this week. So right. as a fantasy owner, if you have Strasburg, because he was drafted would, in every league, oh yeah. would He's you take the over chance? Would you take the chance? For and that one possible for, start on the weekend? For the possibility this week. I would do it in an NL-only rotisserie league. I, right. would, I would start him. I think it's a good call. I think it is. But other than that, I mean, the bottom line is that you own, if you own him, you just hang tight because this guy is going to be yeah. dramatic in the second half. And what I'm looking for, I know it's a little farther out in the future, is going to be just the batting practice in spring training maybe or simulated game between Strasburg and Bryce Harper when the, when the Nationals finally draft yeah. him. Yeah. By the way, you see what he did yesterday? Yeah, he's a monster. Six he's for like, six, four home runs, ten RBIs in a, in a wood bat league. Yeah, yeah. Ouch. It, it is the NJCAA. No, I don't care <laughs> it's if it's National the, uh, College. you know, it's a, it's a little kid, you know, his little kids playing at five-year-old. <laughs> I love kids. <laughs> Honey, we don't have kids. I promise. They're not there yet. They're Your over kids. there at the they're Republican. <laughs> All right, let's move on to the west side of the country. John Eli uh, has just been tearing it up. And Joe Torre, he quoted Yogi Berra on Saturday after his start against the Tigers. He said he is making himself necessary. And that's oh, great for fantasy owners. And the Dodgers need, they, absolutely. they needed something necessary. John Eli since his, uh, since his first start against the Mets, he allowed like five runs in the first two innings. Since then, he's been a knockout ace. I don't think he's going to be that good 
for the full season. But in this small stretch, I think he's very valuable for mixed owners. Those, uh, those guys that you can play the matchups with, Giant Eli is good, and the Dodgers can score a lot of runs. He finally gave up a walk. He had gone 89 <laughs> yeah. batters without giving up a walk before yeah. Brandon Inge had one uh, on Saturday. Let's get into your two-star pitchers. Let's, let's move on forward here. Uh, and Emek, who do you feel safe as your two-star pitchers this week? Well, I think Dallas Braden, after his uh, perfect game, he's obviously proven to be a must-start. Uh, Jeremy Guthrie is a solid option in deeper leagues because of his three consecutive quality starts he's posted. I wouldn't start Masterson. I love Sanchez. I'll talk more about Sanchez later. Saunders has been hot. Those matchups are solid for him. LeVon Hernandez, I'm not sold on him. However, those matchups at two pitchers park in, in San Francisco, San Diego, he could be valuable because, you know, pitchers parks and two offenses that, are, that aren't that great in yep. San Francisco is struggling mightily right now. Well, they are. There are a lot of teams that uh, have struggled at home this season, but nobody worse than the Milwaukee Brewers. A franchise record war start 4-14 four and 14 at home this season. Mm -hmm. They've dropped eight in a row uh, at, at Miller Park, which is the worst since 96. And their biggest problem, or maybe one of them, they have, they don't have, they have pitching issues, and they don't know what to do at the end of the at the end of the rotation. Trevor Hoffman now yep. is set up. Uh, Axford came in, got the save. Yes, uh, they don't know what to do at the end right. of the season. Well, I think the Axford situation was because uh, Carlos Villanueva, their their former setup man that they moved into the closers role, had pitched two innings the previous day in an extra inning game. He did blow a save. Um, that's a little disconcerting because you you wanted Villanueva to take off after that first save he did pick up last week. Hoffman, I think, is going to set up for Villanueva. Axford was a situational uh, closer. Axford gave up a run. He wasn't all that impressive in his one outing. The one that guy that I do look at who was called up on Sunday is the elite pitching prospect, Zach Braddock, who throws real hard. He could be a dominant late-inning reliever. Maybe they use him down the road. But in the end, I think it's Villanueva right now. And I remember I, I in like, our pre-production meeting like, last week, yeah. you talked a lot about Villanueva I, after seeing him pitch against I the I really Phillies. like Villanueva. And, and this move had to come about because Trevor yeah. you know, was just struggling quite a bit and the, the whole team is struggling right now they're just not in sync but Villanova keep an eye on and if you and if you own him uh, you know throw him out there this kid's not only can he pitch well against righties he pitches very well against lefties, uh, which is a unique thing for a right-handed pitcher because of his changeup and devastating curveball that is just, you know, it's got it's got left-handed hitters uh, reeling. So he, he'll he'll get his little sea legs in there on yeah. that. He's never done that on a consistent basis. And, and, and the bullpen had issues Saturday. I mean, Minnesota, they came back, and then they yeah. the bases were loaded in each the 10th, 11th, and finally they lost it in the 12th there on, on Villanueva Saturday. is the short term. I think Hoffman could get another look. You know, he was decent as a setup guy on Sunday. And then Braddock maybe long term. They have much higher hopes than what they've get they, what they've gotten. So and far I think it'll season. come around. Randy problem. Wolf hasn't been good either. Yeah. I think he'll come around as well. All right, let's do buy or sell, guys. Uh, players, whether you would uh, want to trade for him now or, or, or guys you want to sell here, and of course uh, we'll, we'll get some stock market stuff later too. Is uh, <laughs> let's, let's start with this Brian Bannister, uh, Emac buy or sell. Uh, I'm not. I'm not going to buy this guy. He's never been a guy that's been trustworthy. To me. He's had some spurts. Where Six he, innings and seven of his nine starts, though. Yeah, but you know, he's just a. He's one of the more hittable pitchers in the major leagues. I know he's he's very cognizant of his babe up and Al Malkior loves him for that reason. But <laughs> I don't trust this guy in a mixed league. You know, he's got the Royals backing him up. That's not a great offense. He's a guy who's very hittable. He's very unimpressive to me. You could start him in spots and play the matchups with him, but in mixed leagues, I don't even own him. At all. At all. Wow. He didn't yeah, get a third win over the weekend. I'm just mean. Well, you know, he's I mean, harsh. He's harsh. He's a devil's advocate. There's, so, he's many there are, there's there are. so many more talented arms out there. That's true. That. You but, got he, but, 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 what if, but what if, you know, if quality starts uh, is one of your categories, oh, it, he's he going to go six innings you almost every time. You can't count on him. He, he's just a guy who throws some starts out there. You put him in your lineup, and then he blows up on you. Got more and I've seen that also. happen. <laughs> yeah, but I would not start Brian Bannister over Roy Alza. No, no, no. We'll, we'll send you back to fantasy football today if you keep talking about that. All right, let's get into another one. Oh, give me a Clayton Richard, buy or sell? Uh, you know, I like this kid, and, and, and I think uh, Emac's going to join me on this one, yep. too. I think he's a kid that, you know, if you look at the, the big things for me when I look at a young pitcher like that is the walk-to-strikeout ratio because yep. that's the ones that, you know, they get all the, talking about a little fearful. And this kid, you know, a little bit better than two-to-one walk-to-strikeout is going to go, you know, as a fresh arm. I like him. I keep this kid and uh, and don't sell him whatsoever. I think the Padres have been such a pleasant surprise because of all that young pitching Correct. just coming together. That's and it's, it. That's it, the only it, reason. It, with you said with what you said about the strikeout to walk ratio, and we had the discussion last week about home run rate. When you're pitching in that big park mm -hmm. in San Diego, it, it's it's a lot easier to come up and get your right. legs under you, get your confidence 
because they can hit the ball of the gap and it's not a home run. So uh, you can throw over the plate is yeah, what you think. You're right. not trying to nibble and trying to squeeze it. You know what I mean? You so go, with, go uh, ahead and hit it. San Diego pitchers, you can get some value on them. Uh, them. I know that the big ballpark in Kansas City, but I'm not buying fans. <laughs> oh, look at that. Look how he came yeah, back to throwing it out there. Even the renovations, it's all it's great there. Uh, he went Columbus back to Brian Banner. No, no, he did. I, I, he saw I, it in your eyes. I see what he was doing. He hasn't sent me back to finish the football today just yet. We will start it up back, by the way, in August. All right. Brett Myers for the Astros, guys. He was dominant in his win over the Rays this weekend. Was yeah. very, very good. Oh, since you saw him, uh, yeah. buy, or, buy or sell. Man, this is a, this is a tough one I, uh, for I like me him. here. You know, you, you like him, um, I, and I like and like I like Brett in, uh, on a whole. I mean, but I, I'm going to tell you, be honest with you, I'm going to sell him because I, I think he's another one of these guys that can be very streaky and be and kind of like. So I think, and you're talking about the hitters with the 25 percent. You know, you do the damage. He might have done his damage right now, right. positive damage. So, I, again, I agree with you. I think there's so many other surprise and some quasi-veterans out there, like an Anibal Sanchez, yep. uh, who could, who I'd rather pick up and, 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 you know, and be buying than this guy. And we're going to keep talking about Sanchez. I got some more stuff Good on him stuff later. On but kid. Brent Myers, I think, is a little undervalued. I think he's, a, he's not a, a front-line starter, but he's a, a middle-of-the-rotation guy. And the Houston Astros, if you look at their run support, I said it with Roy Oswald, worse than the major leagues of the 126 pitchers who qualify with 40 innings or more. Brett uh, Myers is their best. He only gets 5.5 runs per game. So that's something to worry about, but he's still be pitching pretty consistently. And as a veteran, I think that team's going to heat up. I think they're going to reel off some big uh, win streaks. I think Brett Myers can be a beneficiary of that. Well, Man, he, if only Brian Bannister could get traded to, to Houston. Houston. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then then no, you'd no, be no, on his boat. No, 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 no. This man is sold on the team with the second worst record in baseball. <laughs> Thank you very much. Hey, that's how you work the stock market. You buy the yeah, under Buy low, I understand. I, well, I'm, okay, if you go back a week and a half ago, you would have been buying very low on Edwin Jackson. And that would have been uh, awesome. And now uh, he's gotten two straight wins. Yeah, 12 uh, Ks against the Marlins and then 9 but here's, Ks. But here's my problem. And no you, and, you and I, you and I, I differ. Sweat. You and I differ on this one because you look at his last four starts and you throw out all the strikeouts that he's th throwing strikeouts. out. Strikeouts. That's they great. They matter. But in two of those four starts, five earned runs and six earned runs. That's not going to yeah. help he you. He also had shutout innings in there, too. Right. So uh, he has been hittable this season, and that's a little uh, disconcerting. But that strikeout to walk ratio, nine strikeouts, no walks last time out. And that one uh, shutout that he did pitch uh, with the, set, uh, the 12 Ks, he said I was effectively wild. So, uh, you know, he's got some knockout stuff, and that knockout stuff can lead to a long hot streak. Maybe he's on the, the, the rebound to be the pitcher we saw early part of last year. But early is the, is the issue because from July to September, he, he wasn't down. very good for the And Tigers that was just a, a function yeah. of him building up to be that 200-inning yeah. every-year guy. That has that's something you have to build up to. You can't you can't run a marathon. He and be did good lead at the it. league last year in, in strikeouts per nine so. innings. So yes. uh, you know this guy can punch him out, and, but, and that, that that adds to your. But in the last your two months of the season, home, balls were flying out of the park left and right, and let's not forget where balls fly out of the park in Arizona. Yeah. The farthest home runs uh, home runs hit the farthest uh, in Major League Baseball. Don't forget you can chat with Al Melkier right here. It's on the right side of your screen here on Fantasy Baseball today, presented by Captain Morgan. We'll get to your questions a little bit later in the show. Coming up next, the hitting planner. And we're also oh, yeah. going to have some numbers here uh, that I have no idea what they mean. But that'll be coming up next here <laughs> on <Al>. the show. <laughs>